About one year ago, I completed my first video review, which was of the Easy Forza. It wasn't the best review and it had a lot of rough edges, but this time around the video will be a lot better than the previous one. Now, can the same thing be said about the new Forza? Well, Easy have made some changes including the battery brand and upgrading the brakes. So I guess we'll find out how these changes hold up. Let's get into it. The old Forza was quote unquote murdered in all black, and this new Forza is literally the same. Finished with a gloss black paint, this latest model is black from the handlebar to the chainstay. You have the Forza logo, which they've changed, slapped on both sides of the down tube that matches the reflective pinstriping of the tires and the fork sanctions. Like previous models of the Easy, including the Sprint for example, the Forza is very monochrome. It's simple, black, and minimal. Personally, I think they could have done a little bit better in the aesthetic apartment, but then again, that is just my opinion. Only coming in one size, the Forza is fitted with entry level components. At the rear derailleur, you'll find a Shimano Elevio M4000 along with its corresponding Elevio shifter. The forks on the Forza are supplied by Mozo, however, I don't know the exact model. Best belief I try to determine the exact forks, however, from the side, all the forks look exactly the same, and with the stickers removed on this one, it was hard to pinpoint. I'm guessing they are the Mozo grooves. These have been selected over the previous Zoom ZXR AMS forks, which were air sprung, whereas these Mozos use coils. Now coils are fine, however for most applications air is the best way to go. But let's talk about the upgrade. The brakes. These are e-bike specific brakes from Magura called the MT4E. The E denotes that they are e-bike specific brake sets. So these are actually based off the original MT4s which received positive reviews. And I imagine these will perform just as well. Moving on, the Marathon Plus tyres supplied by Schwab are fitted onto the 26 inch Easy Double War Pro rims. This setup is almost the same as last year with the only change being the rims. Now I'm surprised that they didn't upgrade the wheels to 29ers. Most commuters are fitted with 29ers for that extra speed. I suspect Easy went with the 26 inch wheels to provide that bike with a more agile feel and target the hybrid market. This time around, Easy have equipped the Forza with a 36 volt 19 amp hour BMZ battery. They are a German brand which allows an upgrade to 34 amp hours. Pause. Let's take a moment here. The standard 19 amp hour is already ridiculous, and for Easy to provide a 34 amp hour option, they must want you to be able to ride across the country. Oh wait, they did. What? Most electric bikes nowadays come with standard around 15 amp hours, so a 19 amp hour and a 34 amp hour offering is just insane. According to Easy, the 19 amp hour battery can provide a range of 50 kilometers on maximum pedal assistance. To put this in perspective, some e-bikes only just reach 50 kilometers on medium assistance. I'm estimating that the 34 amp hour battery can provide a range up to 80 to 90 kilometers with full pedal assistance. Now there is no pricing on the battery upgrade, but from the website, I gather it will be upwards of $1,000. At the heart of the Forza, you'll find the brushless 200 watt rear hub motor. It's internally geared so you'll get all the benefits of it being smaller and more torquier than direct drive hub motors. According to Easy, it is street legal and since it's rated for 200 watts, there's no speed limit. Smart Easy. <laughs> I like this. For those who don't know, in Australia, if a motor is rated to 250 watts, it's street legal. However, the motor must cut out once the e-bike has reached 25 km per hour. If a motor is rated above 250 watts, it is not street legal. But if the motor is rated to 200 watts, there's no speed limit required. This rule also allows the throttle to be legal. Thank you, Australian government. Fingers crossed I don't change this. Considering this, I'm questioning why companies are manufacturing commuter electric bikes with a 250 watt motor. Why are you not use a 200 watt motor without a speed limiter and a throttle? It would be a huge help to riders if they could commute at 40 kilometers instead of 25. If you guys know the reason, let me know in the comments below. Continuing on, the display meter slash remote controller is the same one from last year. Most EZs feature this controller with a simple layout for the battery and pass level and up and down buttons. Now you're probably wondering how this bike turns on since it's not on the meter. Well, I'll show you how. Some of the features, show you guys some of the features that this bike has. Uh, first thing is the key. So to turn on the bike, uh, you have to turn it on via this key. It would have been nice if this key was up there so more like a scooter or a motorbike um because it is a little bit inconvenient and also the other problem is when i'm pedaling and i leave the keys in 
my feet sometimes hit the key. Uh, I guess the easy fix to that is to just take the key out. Um, simple. And then to unlock the battery, you simply just push in, uh, turn, and you take the battery out. But to do that, you have to flip the seat, just like the old model, and then just pull the battery out. Um, so another feature is the throttle. So this bike comes with a throttle. Now, when the bike has a uh, pass level of zero, the throttle will not work. But once uh, it has a pass level of one, it gives you maximum assistance when you throttle, no matter what the pass level is. Um, now, the other thing that I want to give my thoughts about is this LCD meter. So this isn't like any other meter. Um, well, it is. It, there's an LED meter, then a Cat Velo 7 as well. So uh, this shows you all the speed, the time, the domino, um, and then this just basically controls the motor. So it shows you battery level and power. Um, it's a little bit inconvenient how it's in the center because, you know, when we ride, we ride with two hands on the handlebars. Um, so when you're traveling at like 40 kilometers, 35 kilometers on a busy street and you need to change this, it gets a little bit dangerous. Uh, so I would have liked that to be uh, closer to the hands like all the other models. Um, but nevertheless, it still works. Okay, so to cushion your rear, there's a Velo Plush saddle. Extra features and accessories on the bike include a headlight, tail light, rear rack, and a bike lock. Okay, <laughs> riding review time. I'm going to begin by telling you how my first experience went. The bike is ready, I turn it on with the key, up goes my leg which swings around and my butt sits on a plush saddle. First push of the cranks, nothing and... The Forza is packing a lot of torque in that small 200 watt motor. I think it hits you harder because you're expecting the power to smoothly come in, but this bike has a slight delay and it gives you all 200 watts of it. It's kind of like an obsessive partner. It gives you nothing, slight delay, then gives you all it's got. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. The motor is quite powerful and I reached speeds up to 40 kilometers per hour and cruised at 35 kilometers per hour, thanks to the absence of the speed limiter. The pavement friendly tires also help with that. With the Schwalbe Marathon Plus tires pumped at 50 psi, the bike effortlessly rolled over the road and the extra width helps you ride when things get a little bit sticky and you need to ride a bit off road. But more than anything, it stabilizes you. Now, I have been consistently pointing out the upgraded brakes, so let's finally talk about them. They're awesome. There's something about the Maguras that are really satisfying. Now it doesn't have the modulation like the Shimano XTs, but there's a slight click when you engage them and the motor cuts out. It's the most beautiful thing to use and the feedback on the fingers was nice, especially if you like the mechanical feel. I was impressed with his performance, which was evident in the brakes test as you saw. However, at first they were lacking a little bit, but once the brakes bed in, they pack the punch. So riding the bike is great, how about using it? Okay, so using the Forza was simple as well, but a little bit inconvenient. It's a shame, but like I said before, the controller is in the middle. This made changing the pass level on the go a little bit difficult. With other e-bikes, it was great having the controller within your thumb's reach. Stretch your thumb out, press up or down for a pass level, or hold the power button for a headlight. But with this, you have to take your hands off the handlebars and select your pass. At least it made the display easier to read with that. Now this all adds to the feeling I get with the Easy Forza. It's difficult to explain, but the Forza feels like a legitimate vehicle. With the layout, accessories, and the key to turn on the bike, it feels like what the future is going to be. Although I do hope the future is a little bit more convenient. Wink wink. I guess the best way to put it is that the bike feels complete. It feels whole. Other electric bikes I've ridden feel like I'm riding a push bike with an electric motor and battery on it, whereas the Forza feels like an electric vehicle. This leads me onto the accessories, which play a role in this. The headlight is awesome, however, unfortunately only turned on through the switch on the headlight and not the controller. Now at least EZ has provided us with a good quality headlight that helps you see in the dark and also helps you get seen. The taillight also assists with that, with its bright LEDs that automatically turn on when the bike is on. Now something that commuters would love is the rear rack. The one found on the Forza is not some cheap flimsy one but a quality rack with quality straps that you will actually use. An additional feature that completes the bike and makes it whole is the flippable saddle that allows you to take out the battery. 
Although I have seen this on the old Easy and other e-bikes, it's still brilliant and like I said, it adds to this complete feeling. However, there is one issue I have with the components on this bike and that's the Cat Eye Velo 7. Now the display meter that shows the battery level and pass level are easy to read and you can read them at night. However, the Cat Eye Velo 7 is not backlit. Now this becomes a problem when you're riding at night, you can't see the speed that you're traveling at all the time. This is just a small problem, however, just thought I'd let you guys know. I'm pretty sure you can replace this with one of your own trip computers if you want. In conclusion, the 2017 Easy Forza is a legitimate electric bike. It's not just a regular push bike with an electric motor and battery kit slapped on it. It's complete and mainly due to the little things. The Forza does present some inconveniences to the user such as the key location to turn the bike on, the lack of backlighting on the Cat Eye Velo 7, and the location of the controller. Now, at a price point of $3,500, you would expect the bike without these issues. But I guess the bike does feature a high quality and high capacity battery that will last you 50 kilometers just on the throttle. So, bottom line is that the 2017 Forza is good and compared to last year, it has improved although not significantly. All it needs is some slight design adjustments and it'll be even better. So that wraps up the review. Thanks for watching guys and make sure to check out the full review on our website ebikingnow.com. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. Also, if you have any comments or questions, drop them down below. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date with the latest. And don't forget to turn on, hop on and ride on. Peace out. Zero to 25 tests with the throttle.